Hello, welcome to the next section of the course. This section is devoted to data aggregation and grouping. We start this section with the basics, what groups are and how we form them from Pandas data frames. Once we learn how to form groups, we talk about aggregation to get group summaries. We return to the topic of transformation and other operations, but in the context of groups, and we wrap up the section by discovering cross-tabulation and pivot tables. Let's get started. We start this section by discussing grouping basics. In this video, we will look at how to form groups from Pandas data frames along with some basics of how they are used. Pandas data frames use the group by method for forming group objects. This method is provided with the name of a column or a list of column names that are used to identify groups. The unique values contained in these columns, or combinations of unique values in these columns, are used to form the groups. Think of the data frame as being separated into distinct data frames, none of them overlapping, and the data frame a row is assigned to depends on its group. What if you want to group according to contents of a hierarchical index? This can be done as well, though you would be using the level parameter of group by, telling the method which levels are used for grouping. Group objects can be used for many operations, such as aggregation or transformations. I even show how to use group objects for filling missing data. We will see how to use these objects in greater depth in other videos. Group objects are iterables. We effectively iterate over the group identifier and data frames containing the contents of groups. This gives groups even more flexibility. Let's see a demonstration. In this video, we're going to be working with a population pyramid data set. So let's first load in pandas and also get matplotlib working for us. And then after we load in pandas, let's read in the population pyramid data set. Here's the first few rows of that data set. Let's create a version of this data set that includes only 2016 data. And also I would like to have data stored in columns rather than the index in this case. And I'm also going to go into long form format. You may remember the discussion about long form versus wide form format in an earlier section. Let's now create different groups. We're going to use the group by method, and in this case we're going to group according to age. Notice that we get a data frame group by object. We can also group according to countries and the sex of the individuals, and also we can group according to both age and sex, and thus different combinations of age and sex will give different groups. We can see the groups that are available in a group object by looking at its groups attribute. Now let's see a little demonstration of what we can do with group objects. In this case, I'm going to get the sum of the populations of every country, which countries are more or less populous. Now if you're familiar with world demographics, then this should not be surprising. China and India are the two most populous countries, China at the top with billions of people, and the United States is third. Towards the bottom of the list, we have some of the smallest countries in the world, Nauru, the Cook Islands, St. Helena, St. Barthelemy, and at the very end, Montserrat. We can see how many males and how many females are in the world with this command. Globally, there are more men than women. Now let's look at age groups. The first thing I'm going to do is create a pandas series, a categorical series. It's of the categorical data type, which is pretty important in these videos. After I create a series containing this categorical data, which exists only so that I can order age groups in a meaningful way, I can look at how many people are in different age groups, and we can see an overall distribution of age groups. Let's actually see a bar plot. Globally, the most populous age group is the very young, from 0 to 4, infants, which makes some sense. It's interesting that the next most populous age group is 25 to 29. This suggests that subsets of what's known as the millennial generation form a new population boom. We can look at how many people are in different age and sex groups, like so, and thus see the ratio of males to females within certain age groups. Interestingly, we see that there are more male babies than female babies, but amongst the very old, women greatly outnumber men, which matches global demographic patterns. Women have a tendency to outlive men. You can also group using a hierarchical index. In this case, I'm going to group the original population pyramids data set, but using the year level of the hierarchical index associated with it. So we can see how many men and women were in each year of this data set. We can even see how large the global population is in different years. The global population has always been increasing. This has not surprised anybody. 
and we can see a plot of this global population rise. We can look at how many individuals are in countries on the globe in certain years. So we can see how many people are in each country. Before we had populations separated by male and female, here we see just total population for every country. As mentioned before, these group objects are iterable objects. That means that we can iterate over them in a for loop. So in this code block, I print the name of the sex groups, which is the identifier for different groups. And I also look at the first few rows of each group. And this is what we see. So we have the female group and a data set associated with them and the male group and the data set associated with males. These effectively serve as separate pandas data frames.